And now, please welcome the director of Min Borda, Niki Lindroth von Bar. Hello, Nikki. Hello. <laughs> Last time you were here, you were on the jury. Is yes. it easier to be on the jury than in competition? Or is it uh, more funny to be on the jury than in competition? It's hard to compare, but it was definitely a lot of fun to be in a jury. Yeah? It was like I had the week of my life. It was so nice to see all those films, and I had such, a good, like, such good discussions with the other jury members. It was just really nice. Mm -hmm. Nikki, your film remind me the, the atmosphere of Roy Anderson's feature films mm -hmm. uh, Songs from the Second Floor, You the Living You probably know these films? Yeah. Yes, actually I've been, uh, I've been working a little bit with uh, You the Living uh, I, was, I, I was doing an internship there and then I continued working for a while so I, I've, had, had, I've had contact with the uh, with the studio for many years. I kind of still know people that works there and, and okay. stuff. So uh, yeah, he's definitely been some kind of influence, even though I think for me, you know, he, he works he, he works a lot with, uh, um, you know, society and like, uh, you know, about life and work and stuff. And I kind of wanted to, I was kind of influenced actually by him to just, because when I saw his la latest film, I thought like, why, why doesn't he use these kind of new venues for you know, low paid work and, and like everyday life as you know, a hamburger restaurant or mm -hmm. like a really cheap hotel or, or a supermarket. So I kind of um, used my, my thoughts uh, for my own film by looking at his latest film. So. Yeah. Oh. The music plays a very important role yes. in the film. So tell us about your musician and, and your collaboration with him. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's a Swedish um, uh, musician called Hans Appelqvist, who's also, his, his own music is a little bit more to, like, it's more like art music maybe. And then I kind of, which also is, like genius and he's also a good friend of mine so I I kind of just uh, went to him and said now you really need to make some kind of you know Gene Kelly homage like uh, you know singing in the rain kind of music or West Side Story and then he he tried his best and it turned out to be so great uh, I'm really happy about the result we also kind of just killed the budget from day one by by uh, choosing to record the music live with a 15-person orchestra, oh. uh, which was really expensive, but also <laughs> <laughs> like really successful. It was like such an amazing thing to, to okay. experience. And, and who wrote the libretto? Was that in the 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 the, the wording, the lyrics yeah. of the song? It, it, it was in the screenplay, or it was a music? No, writer? actually, it was um, uh, the Swedish author and comedian Martin Luke who who wrote the lyrics. Um, or uh, we 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 co-worked a bit with like what what the feelings would be like, what kind of what they would say. But then I I wanted him to use his own words because he has this kind of really like dark, dry humor that I really wanted to add to the story. Uh, yeah, and I'm also like he was like my number one on the list of uh, people to co-work with. So I was just so happy that he uh, said yes, basically. The film was. Screen in Cannes at the director's fortnight. Mm. Yesterday it was here in an animation film festival. Did you have the same kind of reaction from the audience in, the, uh, in these two very different contexts? Yeah, good question. I don't think I know yet really because it was so, it's just so fresh from yesterday. So I haven't really got that much reactions really. Uh, but I, I, I do felt that the audience was like very, um, they laughed a lot yesterday and it was, uh, that was really nice because there are some f funny parts of the <laughs> film, <laughs> mm -hmm. even though it's also quite dark. Uh, so maybe that was the biggest, um, uh, that was the biggest difference. But it was, it's been uh, like, it's been two really good uh, screenings mm -hmm. and the screening yesterday was just great. 
you uh, you were here this morning when I uh, talked with Dario uh, mm -hmm. about the uh, the the shooting set and the mm -hmm. fact we can see the mm -hmm. uh, the set. Uh, it was in your original project project to show this little piece of the world at the end uh, yes. of the film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Because it, it, I think it is the first time you were doing something like that in your. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of um, yeah yeah. I think it. it I, I mean, it's 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 what's one of the first scenes that I actually just decided about when when writing the script because I, I really uh, just had the picture in front of me. Uh, then it was really hard to because this model, uh, this exterior model, is like two and a half meters in every direction. It's like okay. super big, and it took me. I think like three and a half months to to build it. Uh, <laughs> like the, the film overall took like two and a half years to make, so I'm just really really tired now. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think it was really, and I also um, I, I uh, had a, a post production um, a colleague Hugo Vietes Camanio that that made this uh, behind uh, space that looked. I think it looked so well. I was a little bit unsure on how it, it would look, just you know, putting this uh, real model into this kind of um, yeah, CGI background, but it, I think it turned out really well. Questions from the audience? <laughs> hmm. Your last chance, yep, the lady in green. Um, when when did you choose to use uh, animal for character in your process? Uh, is it at the beginning or at the or later? Uh, was it really at the point of uh, using uh, animal? Yeah, was it important? Um, yeah, this is my third film actually where I use animals uh, as characters. I kind of I like. I'd like to see my films as some kind of modern fables, maybe that that like, because the old fables tends to like speak about something in in some you know layer and then speak about something else uh, at the same time. Uh, so I I kind of like that idea, and also I think that um, I think that using this kind of at least somewhat cute animals can like add an, a nice filter between like the audience and what's really going on in the film and maybe it's easier to relate maybe I, I, I'd like to think so at least one last question and this is a bit of a technical one uh, <clears throat> the armatures that you used were they um, handmade or were they wire or did you use ball and sockets or just uh, handmade in uh, aluminum wire uh, it, uh, I think it turned out quite well, but, but they did kind of break from time to time, especially during the tap dancing scene. <laughs> uh, so I'm sorry about that, <laughs> telling the animator who did that. Uh, yeah, I think we, we had like a very, actually we had a very small, like a tight budget for this film, so I, didn't, I, I hadn't really got the money to, to, uh, to get uh, like real... Uh, uh, armature but maybe next time <laughs> Nikki thank you very much it was thank a great you. pleasure to have you this morning ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh.